Yeah, this is it. This is my favorite part of the whole movie. Kristoff! I'm here. What do you need? To get to the dam. You got it. Boom! I was in the theater and I'm like, yeah! Shelving your agenda! Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker. I'm a licensed therapist and I just adore the cinema. Who are you? Who I am you? Alan's. <laughs> Who am I? I don't know. I just triggered an existential crisis without meaning to. It's real easy. <laughs> I'm Alan Seawright. I'm a... <laughs> We're not I'm even Alan... cutting. You just keep going. Nope. <laughs> I'm Alan Seawright. I'm a professional filmmaker. It's very easy to trigger an existential crisis for me because I need therapy. And here we are. So we're gonna go headlong into this. This is Frozen 2. So there's a lot of meat on the bone when it comes to Frozen 2, at least for me. As a relationship expert, as a marriage and family therapist, men are so emotionally stunted in films. And we're mm -hmm. so often portrayed as not having the ability to communicate, not having the vocabulary to express our feelings, and always kind of being bullheaded and piggish and putting ourselves first, right? This is just avoid any more female advice. We gotta be able to get out of here. Well, let's get moving. And so when I'm watching Frozen 2, I just, Kristoff is, he's the perfect man. He really is. I mean, he has the hair for it. He has, he does have luxury. It is your hair, oh my gosh. You know, he's a, apparently he's stinky, but... I've got that too. Here's, I guess here's what it comes from. Most people on planet Earth don't possess a lot of healthy relationship skills. Okay. And, and Christoph, don't get me wrong, he has insecurities galore. Oh, sure. yeah. But he does something so well that's called shelving your agenda. Now, shelving your agenda, I heard this from Dr. John Gottman. He's one of the all-stars of couples, couples therapy, him and his wife, Julie. Shelving your agenda means that when you're dealing with somebody who's upset, or sad, or frustrated, or scared, mm -hmm. you take your desire, if, you've, if they're upset with you, your desire to get defensive, or to explain your perspective, or to correct, or to fix. You take all of those things that you just kind of naturally want to do, mm -hmm. and you put them on the shelf. Okay. They're gonna come off later. Okay. But right now, the person in front of me, <clears throat> and their needs are the most pressing important thing. Got it. So that you feel heard, understood, validated, and that I'm showing accountability if that's necessary. All of those things sound good. They are very good, and Kristoff, for all his flaws, so I guess he's not a perfect man, but he nails that. So let's check this out. All right, here we go. Kristoff, can I borrow your wagon and Sven? Mm -hmm. I'm not very comfortable with the idea of that. You are not going alone. Okay, so uh -huh. here obviously no, he doesn't want that to happen. Me. I'm you not don't. comfortable with you taking Excuse my wagon. Excuse me, I climbed the North Mountain, survived a frozen heart, and saved you from my ex-boyfriend, and I did it all without powers. So, you know, I'm coming. Me too. I'll drive. I'll bring the snacks! Okay, so look at this. Look I'm not very comfortable with that. And Please then he sees sure how important it is to Anna. Immediately jumps right in. Cool, I'll drive. Yeah, cool, I'll drive. Now, there's like this whole stigma, right? Well, bro, you're so whipped, right? Where we, shame, where we shame men for doing anything but bossing women around and tell them what to do. Yeah. Heaven forbid you should actually put what you want on the back burner for a second to be present for the woman in your life. Now, this does go both ways. Like, the skill of shelving your agenda is women can and should practice it for men. Oh, yeah, for sure. But far more often, women do shelve their agendas. Women do put things on the back burner. Women do say, what do you need? I'm here for you. And we culturally, I'm not saying every specific men. Some men are great at this, but culturally. No, but as a culture, for sure. As a culture, yeah. we need some help with this. That's why I love this so much. He's not whipped, and he's not a sissy. He's actually being, you know, an emotionally mature romantic partner. Right. So good on him. Nothing's gonna happen to Arendelle, Anna. It's gonna be fine. Come here. <laughs> Comforting, reassuring. <clears throat> you know, under different circumstances. Maybe don't take relationship a, advice uh, from a reindeer. Pretty <laughs> romantic place. I don't know. <laughs> different circumstances? But no problem showing like affection. Sure, yeah. What? No, no. Very open, saying, emotionally uh, responsive, right? Just we don't make it out of here. Wait, what? You don't think we're gonna make it out of here? No. No, I mean, no, we, we will make it out of here. I do actually have an issue with the writing here, the, the excessive... You think we're like extreme die? misunderstanding. No, 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 no. It's a little force. It's a little force. I like it because the actors sell it well, but I see what you mean in the writing. Yeah. Don't patronize me. That is a funny scene, though. The whole thing with Anna right now is she's so preoccupied about keeping her sister safe yep. that she's not really paying attention to. Kristoff and his needs, or Kristoff and their relationship, she takes it for granted that they're solid and that they're gonna be okay. 
Yeah. But on his end, he feels like I'm not a priority to her. He feels mm. like, how much does she really care? Am I more invested in this than she is? Rangers and these are the types are of misunderstandings that often happen because we all have insecurities and we, and we project them onto the behavior of other people. But what we see, like our percept, we need to be careful that our perception doesn't become our reality. Correct. Right? I see what you do, but then I prescribe the emotion behind it. I try and make sense of it. And I oh, say, yeah. oh, this is why you did it, or this is what you're thinking, or this is... And we're so often wrong. We'd almost always. Like, how often have you done that and been right? For me, I think Rarely. it's twice ever. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> just, it's never ever right. And one of the things that I love about you know, what we're doing here is, you know, from a filmmaking perspective, it's like that scene and then this entire musical number, which, by the way, is my favorite Eagles song ever. <laughs> I love this. Uh, and the best music video made since 1986. Um, right, it but, has that feel. He's even got the feathery 80s hair. Oh, Singing so into, the, into the acorn is, or the pine cone is awesome. So, so good. But, uh, what this is doing from a narrative standpoint is letting us know that he's not just a doormat. Like, he has feelings. Because we haven't really gotten a lot of that. We've gotten a couple of fumbly bumblies. Right. But we haven't gotten... Fumbly mumblies? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we haven't gotten the, like, this is really hurting me Yeah. feel until we get this. Going back to what we were talking about, how, how often we misinterpret the emotion or intent behind another person's behavior. Yeah. And usually that misinterpretation is tied to our own fears, our own insecurities. So with shelving your agenda, the whole skill is, I'm gonna listen to understand, not to refute. I'm gonna validate your emotions. Because I can disagree with your words, I can disagree with your thinking, I can disagree with your behavior. But there's really no way to disagree with an emotion, because an emotion just is. Yeah, you can't, you don't feel that. Yeah. That's what? And then if there's anything you're saying that I need to take ownership for or be accountable for, let's say you accuse me of like 99 or 100 things and I think 90 of it is you're so off. Right. And the other 10%, like I can see your point, but I don't like the way you're talking to me about it. If I can say, if I can take ownership of what I agree with and I'm like, you're right, that's something I need to work on and I'm sorry. Like, have you ever had an argument where you did that? Like what happens to the balloon? It's just like, it's, all the air goes out of it, yeah. Like, there's no fight. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. You do agree with my criticism. <laughs> and then there's no fight, right? right? And then what often happens, and this is something my wife is, is really brilliant at, is she will unshelve my agenda for me. So a lot of times people will take it off the shelf for you. Other times, once they feel heard, they feel validated, they see that you are taking accountability, they are at ease. They're no longer, like, worked up. And it's easier for you to say, listen, do you mind if we talk about my side of things on this now? And because you've already shown that you are willing to listen to them, and you've already shown that you are willing to be accountable, for most people, it's a lot easier for them to listen to you now and to be accountable on their side. It's the hitch principle. Well, you come the... 90 and they'll come 10. Show me the magic. What the hell was that? I'm showing you the magic. I... No, I said come 90 and then I come 10. You don't go to whole 100. Yeah. My love is open, Albert. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. This is my favorite part of the whole movie. It's one line, and it's incredibly simple. It's a blink if you miss a thing, but... Kristoff! I'm here. What do you need? To get to the dam. You got it. Boom! I was in the theater, and I'm like, yeah! <laughs> and I'm like, shelving your agenda! Did you... And people are like... Literally nobody else. Nothing. They didn't even know. I'm here, what do you need? Let's look at the context here. Like, okay. We know what Anna's gone through. We know she's got a plan. Kristoff is coming fresh on the scene. He's got nothing. He's been off lost in the woods singing a power ballad. <laughs> <laughs> he has no context for what's going on. But in so many moments where the, the guy saves the girl, it's like, lucky for you, I was in the neighborhood, right? Or now we're gonna go do this other thing that I need to do. Right. Yeah. Or even worse, like, what's going on or what did you do? Implying like, She's this made a mess yeah. that I now have to clean up as the big strong man. Right. Like all these like action hero tropes, right? Instead, he says, I'm here. What do you need? Boom. Yep. And this is classic. This is perfect shelving your agenda because Kristoff's got questions. Sure. He, he, he's totally, you know, he's like, why is there a giant? There are stone giants <laughs> stomping a forest. Right? Ah. Uh. And so often it's like, 
I, you need to explain this to me before yeah. I do anything. I love Anna, but she's been a little mm, when it comes to him, because she's so focused on her sister. Did Elsa seem weird to you? She seemed like Elsa. Hmm. <clears throat> that last word really seemed to throw her. What was it? But he realizes now is not the moment. She's in crisis. She needs me. Yep. On the shelf. That's all going to come off later. I'm here. What do you need? And she says to get to the dam. And he says, you got it. I'm sorry I left you behind. I was just so desperate to protect her. I know. I know. It's okay. My love is not fragile. Boom! Booyah. And he says it but he's been demonstrating it the entire film. If you say that, it means nothing. Yeah. If you demonstrate it over and over and over, yeah. then when you actually say it. And my love is not fragile doesn't mean I haven't been hurt or worried right. or concerned or you know whatever. It means we're gonna be fine. Yeah, we'll get through this. It's a problem. Yeah. But we'll get through it. Because that's successful relationships. You, you hurt each other, you offend each other, you wound each other, all these things happen. And that's what commitment is. Richer, poor, sickness and health, like good times and bad. Um, but you notice she unshelved his agenda. Well, first she said, I'm sorry I left you in the woods. Yeah. Like she recognized exactly what she did. I know what you were feeling and I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. Yeah. I recognize that I made you feel that way. And that's awesome accountability on her part. Yep. There is so now thing. he finally gets Honor. his moment. You were the agenda most off shelf. Yeah, <laughs> agenda off shelf. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and now's the time for it. Yep. Will and you notice you? she's she's so moved and ready for it. She's even doing like this thing. I'm verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason this worked is because the other times he tried early on, he was ignoring what was going on with her. Yeah. I'm not saying he shelled his agenda the whole time. Like early on, he tries to put his first. No, he kept having his agenda out. To want to marry a man you just met. Wait, what? Crazy? You didn't say I was crazy. You think I'm crazy? Mm -hmm. And then having to shelve it. In case we die. You I think could... we're gonna die? No, 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 no. I, we will die at Where's some Elsa? point. Not, not at I any recent that I time leave will her we die. Side. But I... Because he was like, ah, and I'm in the wrong time here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But he, he wasn't aware enough to not even try in the first place. <laughs> He's not perfect at this. Yeah. But he figured it out by the end of all of those scenes. Yeah. And yep. that's, you know. I, because I'm a deeply damaged, flawed person, think of my life in scenes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and in storytelling, and in filmmaking in particular, you really want an arc in every scene, right? Yeah. Every scene starts in one place, and then an argument or a fight or a dis, you know, some kind of dispute Something happens, happens. where the scene ends somewhere it else. It ends somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so you need to have that in storytelling. Anytime where there's an opportunity to listen to someone, to learn, and to grow, you can do that. Yeah. You can have a scene. Yeah. In your life, where you start here and you end there. Yeah. And he, you know, starts these scenes in not great places. <laughs> <laughs> By the big heroic, what do you need moment, he starts the scene in the right place. He doesn't he's, even he's have his good. agenda out. Yeah. He's like, it's over there, don't worry about it. Giant what do you rock need? monsters will do that, though. They will, yeah. <laughs> Every time I've had to rescue someone from giant rock monsters, it's been the same thing. This is, this is how to live a fulfilling life. It's cinema therapy. You're, You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> oh, wow. Christoph! Oh, did you boys get all dressed up for me? And he has gone full <laughs> Alan hair. Yeah, he has. One hour. He looks better with it than me. One hour. That's okay. I prefer you in leather anyway. What? <laughs> Whoa. I prefer two different things to two different audiences, Jonah. I prefer you in leather anyway. Wow. I mean, well, who doesn't? You don't want to go to the extremes. We talk about fight or flight, and whenever there's conflict, we enter into fight or flight mode. Flight would look like a conflict avoidance, right? I mean, I, I don't want to have this fight, I don't want to have this argument, and that usually looks like not shelving your agenda, but stuffing your feelings. Or if there's conflict, you can go into fight mode, which looks like attacking, which looks like my agenda, my needs, this is what we're doing. The sweet spot in the middle is, no, my needs matter, my feelings matter, but you're upset, you're afraid, you're angry. I'm gonna come back to what I need, but if you're angry, I don't have to be angry. If you're afraid, I don't have to be afraid. If you're overwhelmed, I don't have to be overwhelmed, but I can care and I can be present. And anything that I need, can we can deal with later. Thank you for explaining shelving your agenda. Yeah. Something that I instinctively, occasionally do, but not very often. 
I think everybody stumbles into it once oh, in a yeah, while. Oh yeah, you accidentally do it all the time. But right? knowing it helps you to mindfully do it. Absolutely. So thank you for watching Cinema Therapy. As always, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. You can follow us on other social media at therapy underscore cinema. Uh, if you want to watch Frozen 2, it's on Disney Plus, or you can use the link down below to rent or buy it. You can also use the link down below to schedule a free 15-minute consultation with moi. Until next time, ride your reindeer, wear your delicious leather chaps, and watch, watch movies. movies. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> delicious. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs>